Yo, what's good YouTube? It's Boardsy, and this is going to be the top 10 wireless mice from 2021. That's the really crucial part from 2021, released this year. So if I get a comment, it's like, oh, where's the super light? Where's the Viper Ultimate? I'm going to lose my mind, so that is a fair warning. It's also not really going to be in any order. When you have this many mice making a specific order, it's just too hard. Um, so I'm just going to go in order of whichever mice I want to pick up. Um, so this is the Model D-, minus, but really at the number 10 spot, the number 10 that is not ranked, um, you can have any of the new glorious wireless mice, including the O- minus wireless, the D- minus wireless, or the Model D wireless. This is the safest shape out of the bunch and the one that works best for me. The standard Model D really only works for palm grip, and the Model O minus, if you have large hands, is only going to work for fingertip. Um, but this, it's really the fucking Goldilocks mouse, you know? Goldilocks and the three bears, this is the safest one. I feel like I've made that reference for a mouse before. The main caveat with these glorious wireless mice is the piss-poor battery life. Um, even worse if you have the RGB on. It's really bad. They need to upgrade it. One positive change Glorious has seemed to make, though, is in regards to the build quality, because these mice are actually solid now, as opposed to before they just had terrible build quality. I did try to keep this list to mice that I personally think have good enough build quality for long-term use. Um, but yeah, the Glorious mice, they now have 3370s, kill 8.0 switches, which honestly a lot of these mice do does seem like that has become the standard and for $80 they're solid they're nothing extremely special just a solid wireless mouse for the price now number nine is going to be the ExtraFi M4 wireless this is a mouse that I've recently got and honestly I don't I'm not liking it a lot right out of the box um, I haven't reviewed it yet the review will be coming soon but I still think it fits into his top 10 spot more so than something like the Cooler Master MM731 this is an aggressive ergo shape. You can see that there is a huge curve on the left side, and the flat of or the top of the mouse is basically flat. This mouse once again has a 3370 sensor and kill 8.0. It also has honeycombs all around the mouse. That's awesome. It feels so modern, like a cheese grater. The thing about the M4 wireless is that it is $100, which is $20 more than Glorious's wireless offerings and $25 more than the next mouse I'm going to talk about, the Pulsar X Lite wireless. So unless you're already a fan of this shape, it's hard to really make a case for buying it, um, but the specs and the performance are solid, and the only issue that I actually actually have is just an ungodly amount of pre-travel on the main clicks. In game it does seem to be fine and these side buttons are great but yeah it's just what I wanted to mention I don't think that this is an elite mouse um, but obviously if you love the shape your opinion will differ. Now this is the Pulsar X Lite wireless which is a mouse that definitely is a good value. It is a cheese grater, which I'm sure people are happy about because it's a modern design, just like the M4. Um, but yeah, this mouse weighs in at only 58 grams, so it is tied for the second lightest on this list, and also the second cheapest on this list. The only things that I don't like about this mouse are the side buttons and the main switches just have a really poor feeling and cheap implementation of the Kill 8.0s, in my opinion. But once again, the performance is solid. Kill 8.0's 3370 sensor. Somebody should count how many times I say Kill 8.0's and 3370 sensor in this video. The stock skates are also passable, and for $75, this is a good wireless mouse if you want an EC clone and don't want to get the glorious mice. Uh, now, number, fuck, what is it, seven? Um, wait, wait, I went over three? Okay, yeah. So this is, wait, no, 10, 9, 8, okay, yeah, seven. I'm leaving this in the video. Is the Rocket Cone Pro Air. This is a mouse that is not a cheese crater, so boo, solid shell design, cringe. Uh, it is also at $100, but this definitely has a more premium feeling than the ExtraFi M4 does at the $100 price point. One thing is that this mouse is using Rocket's optical switches, which obviously will perform well, but they just feel very dull and weak. So it's not a great click if that is something you care a lot about. The side buttons are 
very solid. The sensor, I believe it is using the 3370 once again, but no kill 8.0s. Um, all of the mice to this point have used USB-C, so I'm just mentioning that. I don't even know if anything doesn't use USB-C on this list. Oh yeah, um, a few of these, yeah, a few mice don't use USB-C. One thing I liked a lot with the Cone Pro Air is the shape of this mouse, and it might look like an aggressive ergo just based off of the curves, but I found it to be very comfortable for claw grip. This comfort groove on the left side just really, or it's a thumb groove more, um, it really Get, gets your thumb in a good place, and even though this mouse is still large, you can vertically micro-adjust easily. I found it to be one of the best ergo shapes that I have used, and now that it's lower than the original $130 price point, it's a solid mouse all around. Now number six, know which one I'm doing this time, is the Vanser Gret XA. This mouse is closest in shape to the Starlight 12 Medium, which is a shape that not many mice come close to. Some could argue a Viper Ultimate, but I, I don't see it as much as the Gret XA. This mouse is $80. It can be found on all sorts of places like Yuki Ames website, Addis Inc. I'll leave a few links. Um, but yeah, this mouse, it's overall nothing incredible. It does have an interesting hole design on it. It is just a solid ambi mouse that came out this year. It is using a 3370 sensor and TTC gold switches. Some of the older batches have Omrons, but they're continuing to update it, make it a bit better. This is more of an underrated mouse that I didn't really love, but figured it was worth mentioning. Now, number five is going to be the Razer Orochi V2, and the only honorable mention of this video, the Razer Death Adder V2X Hyperspeed, which is essentially the Orochi specs and like battery situation, but with the Death Adder shell. Um, so I will mention that this comes in at only $60 and after the recent sale, I think the Orochi V2 is still $45 or $50 on Amazon. So it's extremely cheap now. It is a smaller mouse. If you have large hands in claw grip or palm grip, this is quite obviously not going to be for you, but if you have medium small hands and you play claw grip, this is going to be a shape that works well, or any hand size and fingertip, this is going to be, in my opinion, one of the better wireless mice for it. Can be as low as 64 grams if you put in a triple A battery. And I mean, really, I have very few complaints with the Orochi V2. Aside from over time, it seems like the clicks do seem to get a bit more creaky, especially towards the top. So it's nothing that ruins the mouse in game, but over time, the click quality does deteriorate and leads to a lower quality feeling, especially towards the top. But at this price point, you just can't ignore the mouse for only $45. That is pretty damn good easily the cheapest on this list i don't know how long that sale is going to last though number four is the ponage ultra custom symmetrical 2 you know what this should be the viper mini ultimate but razor does not want to release that so this is ponage's clone version of the shape this mouse is 110 dollars which i would say is a high ask for a ponage mouse it does seem like a situation where ponage is charging as much as they want because they know you don't really have any other options if you want a wireless viper mini shape assuming you want a mouse that is a bit better out of the box than the deluxe m800 which honestly could have been on this list i totally forgot that thing existed um one thing to mention this mouse is using a 30 370 and kill 8.0s kill 8.0s definitely do have a premium feeling a bit on the heavier side still easily spammable no issues with the tensioning and the overall quality of this mouse is good but it does have a cheap plasticky feeling coating which is one thing to mention but yeah when razor releases a viper mini ultimate it will kill this mouse but for the time being that is number four did i say holy shit i keep forgetting too many mice never doing a top 10 video again now number three we have the g wolves hottie s wireless this is a mouse that doesn't even have a set price retailers charge different prices some places this will be $120, other places it will be $140. Let's go with $120 though. Um, this is the G Wolves Hottie S, which is a shape that a lot of people are familiar with. Some call it the shorter G Pro X Super Light, and it really does feel good for claw grip or fingertip grip with really any hand size. I doubt many people will be thinking, damn, this mouse is too big for me, but it's certainly not a tiny mouse in the same way that the Orochi V2 is. Um, once again, 3370 and kill 8.0 switches comes with ptfe feet i threw the 
these ceramic skates on. They are not very good, um, FYI. But the big thing with this mouse is it seems to improve the quality um, coming from past G-Wolves mice. This is the translucent blue color. I think this was a limited colorway. And that's another thing to mention. G-Wolves really doesn't sell these en masse. Um, so they do produce batches of like 100, 200 at a time. So this mouse is just on the list because I think it's kind of funny and good performing. But it's definitely not a mouse that is easy to buy. Speaking of mice that aren't easy to buy, I was going to save this for last, but what a fucking segue. Um, the final mouse, Starlight 12, this mouse was released this year. And it honestly, I'm not sure if it changed the wireless mouse like game because it doesn't seem like anybody's even trying to beat it. Um, in terms of weight, this is, of course, the Starlight 12, 12 meaning magnesium. This mouse is made out of a magnesium alloy. The small weighs in at only 43, 44 grams. The medium size of the Starlight weighs in at 49 grams. And for reference, the second lightest mice on this list are the Hot ES Wireless at 58 grams and the Pulsar X Lite Wireless at 58 grams as well. So the Starlights are really in a league of their own. Also, in terms of price and availability, this is $190. They did a drop of the Starlight Phantom, which, guess what, had Kill 8.0s and 3370s. Those still haven't shipped out yet, so if you do have a legendary Mouse of the Gods, which is what um, these colorways were called, it will have Omron 20Ms, but future batches are going to have Kales. I'm actually going flying out to LA so I can secure their newest batch, the uh, Pegasus, which is an all-white version. So, really, I don't know. Final Mouse is doing some cool shit with the Starlights. They're never going to be available, like, just on the Final Mouse website at all times. That's not how Final Mouse works. And guess what? If you don't like that, fucking all of these mice are available for you to buy. So, Starlight 12 is definitely more of a luxury item than anything else on this list, but I still stand by the fact that it if you can get this for retail and can obviously afford it, you should. I would not recommend paying the absurd resale prices, but if you get one and you want a light wireless mouse, I think you're going to be satisfied. I've put a ton of time into my small, and I think it's still as good as it was on day one. Just a very solid, well-rounded mouse, insanely good battery life, just hard as fuck to buy. Um, also, this mouse is using micro USB along with the G Wolf's Hot ES Wireless. Um, and now I think it's time to move on to the number one mouse. The last but not least, the G303 Wireless. Yes, Logitech X Shroud G303. Oh my god, Shroud Mouse. This mouse is only made for claw grip. It did come out recently. It was Logitech's big release for the year, I suppose. It has the Hero 25K sensor. The battery is even bigger than the Superlight, so you should expect around a month or more of battery life on a full charge. And the shape is pretty much an enigma. It's not the exact same as the original G303 shape. Slightly larger and slightly more rounded out, so it is a bit safer. Uh, but this is still by no means a safe shape, and even if you go into to it with medium to large hands playing aggressive claw grip you might still find the shape too awkward and not really worth getting adjusted to but there are some people who touch it and their hand and their brain decides that's the greatest thing that god has ever created um, so it is going to be a hit or miss shape even though i found it to just not really be an elite mouse in the same way that the super light was but it was at the end of the day a collab with shroud this is shroud's favorite mouse of all time so he got his own version of it. It's pretty cool, but not like the number one mouse of 2021. And I understand it might be confusing since this is at the number one spot in the top 10 wireless mice from 2021 list, but I just chose to not do this in order because I'm a bad YouTuber. Um, but yeah, that's going to be all for this video. I do hope you enjoyed this list. It did take me a long time to iron out the top 10. This was originally going to be a top five. I was like, so many fucking mice came out, even amidst the chip shortage that this video warranted more than five mice. I will make a top five wireless mice for, or not top five wireless, but top five mice for Christmas video in the next week or so. So make sure to sub for that. This was just like a year in review for wireless mice, essentially. Um, but yeah, that's going to be all. Like and sub if you enjoyed. Peace.